Here back we are, in it. Back in the saddle again. We're in it. We're in it to win it. Yeah. We're going to win this podcast. The win the podcast wars. It's a war? It's always a war. Who are we warring? We're warring with Joe Rogan. (laughs) We're coming for you, Joe. We're coming for you, Joe. You think you can run to Texas? It's a war on the shore. You think you can run to Texas? You can't run from the snarf. Not the snarf. Anywho. uh, Back at it. Number 91. Here we are. Uh, Did we make a decision on whether it's 91 or 92? Well, technically, if you count the episodes, it's 92. So but what, what is the numbering it? wise, it's 91 because I'm not going to go back and change every single episode number. Okay. So and that was a screw up at number 10. So when we first did uh, the Snarf Madness, well over a year ago now, ages ago, many, many moons, um, I labeled episode 10 and then 10.1. That wasn't for Snarf Madness. That it, was the snapping. That was our oh, top that, 10. 20 Marvel movies. You're right. It was the snapping. And yeah, I so I labeled them as 10 and 10.1. Those are good episodes by the way. People should oh, listen to those. Oh, very good. And I uh I don't know why I did that. And I've I've went back and looked at it and I kept thinking like, hmm, shouldn't have done that. But oh well. We're just too deep in it's it cause now. Cuz it was Chris. a two-part event. Um right. we got a lot of uh I feel like I got a lot of positive feedback on our last episode, and everybody Did keeps you? telling me that, and I don't remember anything we talked about. That's the problem. I mean, usually I do, but we were just straight bullshitting like I, that whole episode. The so. whole time. The I, whole time. We came in with nothing and left with gold. So you guys apparently like it the most when we're bullshitting. Which is crazy to me, because in the moment, it just seems fine. Like We're just talking and going over things, and we might chuckle back and forth. And then we leave, and it's like, <laughs> to me... I remember some of the main topics and I listen over it again to post the episode, but not, I don't like scour the episode. I don't listen to it straight through. So I just, I always think like, yeah, it was fine. And then we get feedback that it's good. And then, and I'm glad (laughs) because I just don't think we're putting out the content until other people tell me we are. Um, Okay. So just to give a little rundown. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're going to do for this show because i think i like if we put it out at the beginning of the yeah. episode put it out on front street chris lay it out there all right first things first we got to talk about a little bit uh ideas and for some sort of big snarf 100 episode we do thing that we can do some kind of event where a we give event. away prizes and scores of dozens of prizes and we we buy out the louis joliet mall and have a gathering of less than 50 people yeah Eat socially distance, <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I think we should have like a rave with like five thousand people. One of the the quiet, like those headphone raves. Yep, where there's actually no sound out, and we're just dancing just with headphones. Awkwardly, on. people shuffling their feet. <laughs> yes. Have you ever seen like video? Yeah, or, like those well, video I've things seen it of, on a TV show. Yeah, <laughs> it's just once. like. Like, that's all you hear of these people dancing around? That's really funny. So we're going to talk about that uh, real quick, probably. And then we're going to get into our full coverage of our reactions to the DC Fandom event. That was last Saturday. Big event. It was a digital, um, basically like a digital Comic-Con, really. Yeah. But like all these companies, instead of like making all their big announcements at Comic-Con, they've all decided to have their own little gatherings. Like Marvel's got one, Disney's got one. DC has got one. Yeah. And they released a ton of cool stuff. So we're going to give our reactions on that. And then we're going to do a big, huge. Yeah. Which you've probably seen the, the label for this. Bre- episode. Yeah. Breakfasty themed top 10 at a request. But I didn't know this request. You must have just personally got the request. I did. I personally got the request. Wow. It's a good one. Uh, we're going to do top 10 breakfast cereals. They don't have to be just for breakfast, though. Oh, I eat them all the time. I will eat I just had a bowl. cereal at any time of the day yeah. and give myself diabetes. <laughs> yes. I just had a bowl the other night at like 9.30. And I was like, I, I told Amy, I was sitting there. I was like, I don't understand why I'm even eating this. This doesn't make any sense. She's like, well, don't. It's like, well, that's silly. No. Like, why would I not? And then I devoured and a whole bowl. And it may be on my list, Chris. And now you got the beaties. And I, yeah, now I've got the beaties. The beaties. Yeah. I'm full of beatus. Wilford Brimley would get you some testin' supplies. It, it, <laughs> yeah. 
What what did he sell? Testing just, supplies. Just Di- supplies for diabetes, diabetes right? Diabetes testing supplies. He didn't sell them. It was like you can get them free from Medicare. Yeah. Diabetes testing supplies. Call one eight eight Wilford Brimley's wallet. <laughs> Wilford Brimley's horse. <laughs> Talk to my horse. He knows I've lost weight. My horse has diabetes, and I got him all kinds of testing supplies. Yeah. <laughs> Why does he have a horse? I don't know. He rode a horse in the. He wasn't a cowboy. Sure, he was. Wilford Brimley. Wilfred Brimley. I don't know, but he was on a horse during some of those commercials. No. Where, uh, no. Yes, he was. He was. He'd lean a horse. over. He'd lean over and like lean onto the horse over the the saddle and talk about diabetes. And my and favorite thing supplies. is if you Google him, it comes up his Wikipedia article. And then there's like some little highlights that you can click. That's and like all he's known for. The China syndrome. Number two is diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Number three is Utah and the other four. So maybe there is horses involved. So. Oh, I know there is. I'm not making this up. He oh. rode horses. Oh, he was. In. Okay. After serving in the United States Marine Corps and taking a variety of odd jobs, he became an extra for Western films. Aha. And in a little more than a decade, he established him as a character actor in such films as The China Syndrome, The Thing, good movie, Ooh. that John Carpenter, uh, yeah. Tender Mercies, don't know that one, The Natural. He was the longtime face of television advertisements for the Quaker Oats Company. He was the Quaker Oats guy. He also promoted diabetes education and appeared in related commercials for Liberty Medical. Liberty, yes. Liberty Medical will get you all the diabetes testing supplies you need. As oh my long God. as you ride a horse. Dude, he worked as a bodyguard for Howard Hughes. Really? Yeah. Howard as, Hughes never left his house, so how well, hard is it I to be? I think he did when he was younger. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. just when he was old. Hey, real hard to be a bodyguard. You just sit around in his house with him while he's going crazy. And then he was a ranch hand, a wrangler, and a blacksmith. He began shoeing horses for filming television. I knew it. At the behest of his close friend, Robert Duvall. Robert Duvall. He began acting in the 60s and riding extra as a stuntman in Westerns. Wasn't he in... Um, Good old Robbie. Wasn't he in one of my favorite movies of all time? Um, wasn't he in Cocoon? Wilford Brimley? Yeah, he was in Cocoon. I don't know. Do you, have you ever seen Cocoon? I have. It's been a really long time, but... Oh, it's such uh, a good movie. It is? Is it really that good? Yes, it's that good. With a name like Cocoon... Well, they they're How like aliens it? that form in a cocoon. cocoon yeah. yeah, and there's a, they're all old people. I always get cocoon and the fly mixed up. Um, not even similar whatsoever. Really? No. Oh, I don't know. Um, but cocoon is a hell of a movie. I suggest I give it five snarf stars. Five five <laughs> snars. Yeah. Um, so real quick, we got episode one hundred coming up. It's like in nine weeks, so a couple months. Yeah. We got to do something special. Um, one thing we've talked about in the past is doing that coloring contest. Yes, I think we should absolutely is that do enough that. Time we have for people to complete it, though. I mean, what if we put if we if we get the image out next week with the next week's episode? That'll give them eight weeks to get it colored and sent to us. I feel like that's a pretty good okay. time frame, right? The only thing is, I want it in eleven by seventeen, and I don't have a way to print or scan that. Right. Do I don't even anywhere? I don't even have I don't have it at work either because Do you work of anywhere near a Kinkos. Uh, no. Can you drive to Julia you know, and you go know. to Kinkos? <laughs> we we will have to, I guess. <laughs> but and then the other problem is we'll have to physically mail those to the contestants because they can't print them off. Oh, that's right. They wouldn't be able to print off an 11 by 17 either unless right. they went somewhere. But I don't want Why do we have to have it in 11 by 17? Why can't we just get it we can get a smaller one and then get it printed in an 11 by 17. Because I want the original painted winner to hang on the wall of Snarf Talk Studios. Okay. You don't want it copied. No, I don't want it copied. Uh, you're right. I agree with you. Maybe okay. we just get... Yeah, we'll have to get a bunch of them printed out. We'll get a bunch printed out. I can probably get it done at Brant's Printing and Morris. So before this, what you will be coloring is a caricature that Chris and I had done at... Uh, C2E2 last year? Uh, yeah. It was in March. It was like right when COVID was starting to become a right thing. Right when it was born. Yeah, it was... Gosh, I got like a bug crawling on me. 
Um, it was, yeah, just born. We knew about it in China. It was a little was, itty bitty baby. It was like, is it here? Is it not here? Well, we went to a massive, uh, like group of people. There was thousands and thousands of people at this event and it wasn't here yet, apparently, because we didn't get I mean, I coughed on Sven Gooley. You did. And he's old. We all pointed at him, and he immediately like turned around and walked away, because he's like, I don't want to talk to those well, people. Well, we pointed at him. He looked at us with a, like, a look of, like, I got to get away from these people. It was almost like a shock. And then he sh- shouted, Berwin. Berwin. Threw a rubber chicken at us and, <laughs> and ran away. took off. Um, anyway. But we got this drawn at C2E2. It's, it's black and white. Yes. I, I'm trying to remember. Oh, we're... Well, should I give away the theme of it? Yeah, we'll we'll show it. It's us as Ghostbusters. Yes, busting a goat ghost. Right, like a uh, like Slimer, only a goat. a goat. And it's in um, black and white, so it's easy for people to, you know. And we weren't a f- originally like we didn't originally know it was going to be black and white. And then when we sat down, he asked if he he could do it in black and white. We're like, oh yeah, that's fine, and we got it. I, I love the drawing, but I do want it colored. I yeah. really do want it colored, and hopefully you guys can color better than I can because mine would look You know, a, the winner is not going to just use sharp, you know. I mean, I don't know what the winner is going to be. I guess have some style. Yes. Use shading, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. But it could also be like, I, I wanted to say like the winner, you don't have to use Sharpies. You could use watercolors. Yeah. That might be cool. Get I think your, watercolors would be a really good idea, but maybe a pastel yeah. box. That's what I was going to say. You could make it like a really vibrant like pop art. You could use markers and colored pencils. Absolutely. And watercolor. So I don't know if anybody wants to do this at all. Let us know if you want to do it. We're going to put it on social media. We're, we're going to print probably 10,000. Well, I think we'll just print them on demand as people join in the contest. Oh, that's a good idea, too. But this, it's a lot of work to color that whole 11 by 17. I it mean, is. It's going to take you a day. So we need to offer a significant award for this, for the yeah, winner. Yeah, we do. Probably, I don't know, solid elbow bump. <laughs> no, we had a, like a real. <laughs> is $100 yeah. enough? $100 and obviously a shirt. A t-shirt? Sweatshirt. $100 and a sweatshirt? I mean, it's going to be chilly by the time this is over with. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I, I would do that. Yeah. We'll give you a hundred dollar Amazon gift we, card. We've and gotten a some. Uh, we've gotten some uh, orders for those shirts too. Yeah, I've got flying off the shelves. A we, bunch of orders. You know, in. I kind of made it seem like they were in limited stock. We got plenty, and we can get more. Yes. So don't don't feel like. Um, we do need to get a crew neck sweatshirt because I promised that we could get a crew neck sweatshirt. So yeah. Who wears crew neck sweatshirts anymore? Really? Is the, is the person that wants it, did they have they ever listened to the podcast? Yes. Or her, her her husband does. She doesn't all the time. I feel like just just wear a freaking hoodie. Cut the hood off. Yeah. You know? And maybe it'll just be a big open. If you want to get that look, that kind of hipstery look that you're going for, uh-huh. cut the sleeves off and wear a long sleeve t shirt underneath it. That's that's is that hipster? Yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah. That just seems slummy. That's what. That seems rocky-ish. <laughs> um, all right. I mean, I don't know. Next time we order an order, I'll throw in a crew neck. We just need to order one. Yeah, I know. It's just <laughs> pain in the butt. Um, but we do have a bunch more T-shirts. We did sell like I don't know ten or so of them. I would um, like to sell a hundred. I more. think more than that. I would like to sell one hundred more. One. Hundred. I did have some people ask if you are ordering two shirts, t-shirts. Is, is there a discount? We can give you a discount. Oh yeah, we can work with that. One shirt for twenty, two shirts for thirty-five, forty. <laughs> that is a deal. <laughs> if I've ever heard of a steal, that's it, right there. Let's do two shirts for thirty. Two shirts for thirty dollars. You heard it here first, folks. Thirty dollars for two t-shirts. 35 for a t-shirt and a sweatshirt. No, 45 for a t-shirt. 45 for a t-shirt and a sweatshirt. Okay, so one shirt, <laughs> 20. One sweatshirt, 30. Yes. Two t-shirts, 30. T-shirt, sweatshirt, combo, 45. For 45. If you want more okay. than that, we'll, we'll make you a special deal. Yeah. Just work with us. 
people, you know? And as always, you can go on to patreon.com slash snarf comics, subscribe and get extra content and all kinds of good stuff. Um, we a bit adieu. Kind of like an honorable mention of top 10 breakfast cereal. Yeah, we're going to have a special um, honorable mention episode for that. We try and do that for all of our top 10s. We do. We try and have at least one uh, original podcast that's only available on uh, on there a month. Um, we're, I know we're a couple months behind. There's been a lot going on in our lives, in my life especially, the last couple months. Right. Sorry. Um, but we do a bit adieu to one of our longest standing patreon yes members we appreciate it greatly. he's still a page he's still a patreon he's just greatly reduced his patronage which is fine which is totally fine absolutely and we appreciate everything you've done so thank you so much thank you um and that is how we move into we the news yeah that's how we roll <laughs> that's how we go into our coverage of DC fandom. It's, Before we get that, do you have any non DC fandom related uh, news? I have one. Can, okay, one. And it's big. Huge? I mean, I think it's huge because huge, I'm. Huge. I, I cannot wait for this. You cannot wait for this. The world cannot wait for this. And they came out today and said that the Dune trailer will finally premiere September 9th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we're finally getting a trailer for Dune. We've got a few days to wait, you know, maybe and, about 10. And like right after that, Mulan comes out. Yes. And Bill and Ted's but adventure comes I out. I just want to see this trailer so bad. You know. I want to see what they're putting together. I used to love, it's not that I don't like trailers, but I'm saying I used to be like, I couldn't wait for them. Yeah. And now a lot of times they just piss me off. Because they give me just a taste, but I want the whole cookie. I get it. I I understand that. But And a lot of times I've always said, and I've said it on this show a lot, that whatever you see in a trailer is a lie. Oh, yeah. It's not what the movie's really going to be, right? They're just throwing things together. Just like a trailer we'll talk about in, in a bit. But this Dune trailer, I don't... I just don't think they can afford to do that. I think they got to give the fans what they want because they need to build they need to build the hype for it. Everybody's always thinking about what the David Fincher movie was in the 80s. Not is, David Fincher. Isn't that who it was? No. No, David Lynch. David Lynch. That's right. Who's David Fincher? Did he do like Fight Club or something? I think so. Anyway, David the David Lynch movie and it's seven. He did seven. Okay. Fincher. Just so you know. And it's not, I just really hope it's not going to be that, obviously. And some of the still images that we've seen, I don't believe it will be. I'm pretty psyched for it. And I just, I just really want to see this trailer. Um, he also um, did Fight Club, David Fincher. He did do Fight Club. And he did a lot of movies I really like. Like, um, I love Seven, obviously. Yeah. He did Alien 3. Decent. I guess I didn't know his that. his first movie. Uh, Panic Room. I enjoyed that movie. Never watched it. Uh, Zodiac. Oh, I saw that. That's like very that movie. good. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. That's pretty good. Not bad. The Social Network. I never saw it. Very good movie. And that's Aaron, what everybody tells Aaron Sorkin me. script directed by David, Fincher. by David Fincher. He also made The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, that's good. And Gone Girl. Ooh, that's very good. I mean, this Wait, guy. Wait, Gone Girl. I thought that Ben Affleck directed that too. I think he might have wrote it. He wrote it for sure, but I thought he directed it. Apparently, I'm wrong. Um, he didn't write it or direct it. He's just in it. <laughs> oh. He's the star the... of it. Uh, Gillian Flynn. No, what's what's the movie that Ben Affleck wrote that he got? Argo. Oh, that movie. That's amazing. what I'm thinking. That's a very good movie. That is one of... I, I, I need to go back and watch that again. Yeah. It's so good. Yes, it is so good. He also did The Town, right? The Town, yeah. It's also very That's good. a very good movie. Mm. Affleck is the bomb in Phantoms, yo! <laughs> And he's also coming back in the Flash show. We yeah, talked about that last we week, did. but I'm still super psyched. But anyway, for it. going back to Dune, if anybody, you know, I realize that there's people that come and go mm -hmm. on the podcast. Sure, and sure. I, I feel, I fear that there's too many people out there that have no idea what Dune is and they don't know why we're so excited about it. I agree. It is one of my favorite books of all time. Yes. Um, top five anyway. 
Um, it's an amazing science fiction fantasy novel. And it, S- yeah. there was a movie in the 80s. There's been a couple TV iterations of it. But it's never been done, I would say, properly. I think the TV versions were pretty good, but lower budget than you'd like. Yeah. And I really recommend that everybody go out and read this book pre-movie because I... 100%. I don't know. I just, even if you don't like sci-fi, I, I still think there's something in this book for everyone. I do too. There's so much to it. It's, it is so deep. Like uh, this whole book is so deep on not just one character. It's like whole families of people and what's going on. Obviously, it's centered around... What's his original name? Um, Paul Atreides. Atreides, yes. And it's centered around him, but oh, there's just so much more to it. Yeah, It's such a huge story, and I don't feel like you're really going to get uh, out of the movie what you would if no. you have read the book. Like, if you just go in and watch the movie, you're going to be like, oh, that was kind of strange, but probably good. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic film. That's why I'm so excited about it. But... It won't be as fantastic for you if you don't read the book. Yeah. I and, think. and when we say book, we're talking about a novel, not a comic book. Right. So it's there's 800 lots of people pages. that are. It, it's a fairly. I feel like I remember it being a fairly quick read. I didn't think it was that quick because of all of the different words and pronunciations that you've got to navigate, figure you know, out and a, navigate. Like at first, a bit of that. There's, a, there's a whole. Like, uh, it's not a dictionary, but it's like a. What's that called? The like a vocab list, basically, in the back of the book, and it gives you a list of all the words and terminology and everything for what you're about to read. And you do need to look over that because they are some pretty hefty words. I've we've talked about it before, but there's online you can hear Frank Herbert read like how these pronunci- pronunciations were what for does each Frank word. Frank Herbert sound like and just and then, like you, just like kind of like Frank Herbert. Like a Herbert. I imagine he's just like, he's British. No? Yes? I don't think so. I don't know. He was saying Mordib. Mordib. Like, how do you get an accent out of that? Mordib. Or uh, it's the Benny, Benny Gesserit. Benny, 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 Benny Gesserit. Benny, Benny Gesserit. Baron Harkonnen. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's just little clips of him saying the words. Well, anyway, I'm looking forward to that. So let's move on to full coverage. DC Fan Dome. Jerry. DC Fan Dome a happened on Saturday. Dome it's a big deal. Of fans. We talked about it last Saturday that it was or last week that it was gonna happen. It happened, and boy did they drop some bombs. So let's start off with the big guns right off the gate. Right off the bat. Let's get um, it. a little bit of a trailer for the Batman. Matt Reeves is the Batman. Which I've now watched like 42 times. times in a row. I did 42. Trying to figure out exactly what's going on. It's like... like Okay, so apparently people have already figured this out. Really? Um, in the trailer, you get to see a new style of Riddler. Which um, I, I tried to figure... I, I figured it out because there was some riddles written later on. So, but I didn't know if that character that you saw at the beginning with the duct tape and stuff, it, that was the Riddler. That's him. Not. Yeah, that's that's the Riddler. Is he like the No More Lies guy? Is that or Yeah. Is he, okay. Well, he's not the guy that says No More Lies on his face. He's the guy that's taping him. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's an interesting costume. It's kind of uh, steampunky. It's, it's, it's just like very weird. dark. Yeah. It all. <laughs> I love it. Graphic. And... It's so scary. it's a different type of character. You it's get to see Gary Jerry. You get to see the penguin in this. I didn't see the penguin. He's there. Where? Um, when they go outside of, they're outside of a, uh, it's like a workshop or something, and they're all shooting guns, and this car explodes. Uh, he's standing there, and it's Colin. It's Colin Farrell, but you would never be able to tell it was him. He's got so much makeup on. Really. And he's got a big scar on his face. I'll have to rewatch that. Then you've that. got the Catwoman that's there. She Zoe looks Kravitz, great. That's Zoe Kravitz. She which she's more of a cat her. burglar than... Well, Catwoman is a cat burglar. Yeah, but she's not really... She's just dressed in black clothes. It's not like she's a suit. She's got like pointy ears. But it's still a, a, a like a yeah. ski mask, you ski know. Mask. It could be early Catwoman. 
Um, so you see those three things. Who and are then, the Joker looking dudes? Are those the Riddler's henchmen then? Well, it might be the Penguin's hen- henchmen. Okay. They look like Joker henchmen. They do. But, and they're hoping that that's not the case. I hope that's not I the case. I hope it's not the case either. But then this guy put out a, a video that said that he's figured out the first riddle. I watched the whole video, but it's one of those overly edited videos where he talks about so many random things and jumps around so Mm. much that all headline no substance yes there wasn't much substance there besides saying that that he's the one that showed like the penguin catwoman riddler and then he kind of hinted at uh the court of owls again and saying that the court of owls may have an underlying That's not a bad idea. I mean, they should do that. Yeah, like have an underlying story here that is connected throughout the whole movie. How do you feel about the Um, Riddler being the main bad guy? Oh, I'm all for it. I've never been a huge Riddler fan, but... Me either, but this iteration looks pretty neat. Yeah. And I think there's more to it than just the Riddler. Um, So James Gordon is walking through... First of all, pause on that. Yeah. That dude that's playing James Gordon. Doesn't he look good? Oh, he's going to be really they good. They nailed it right. He's going to be perfect for that role. I, I'm telling you, I like that actor. I don't even know his name offhand. Um, he's been in a lot of stuff, though. And that works for me. Um, Yeah, so he's walking to this crime scene. And Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright, yes. Jeffrey he's in Wright Westworld. Is, and I really, yes. I don't... I'm not a huge Westworld fan, but he's great in Westworld. Um, He's walking to the crime scene, and as he's walking through this hallway going to the crime scene, all of the cops on the side of the hallway are looking behind him. And then the camera pans around, and Batman's following him through there. What this is saying is that it's basically year two. Yeah, I've heard that. It's not going to be a year one or a, a, a new you know, like the origin story of Batman. This is year two of a young Batman that's already gotten somewhat of a relationship with James Gordon and is working with the police department to a certain capacity, but isn't yet really accepted by the majority of the police department. So it looks really good to me. And then the whole scene where he's just punching that dude. Oh yeah. That's brutally awesome. It reminds me of the Arkham games. It does. Like where you can just pummel people. It looks great. Um, Who is the dude and they say, who are you? And he says, I'm Vengeance. With the face band- bandana on and like the darkened eyes. That They're in a press conference and you get a glimpse of a guy. I don't maybe, remember. And maybe it's supposed to be Batman. I wish you were watching the trailer like I was. Oh, you have been? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even realize maybe it was. Maybe it's Batman. I don't know. Robert Pattinson looks a little odd as Bruce Wayne. I will say that. But he looks awesome in the bat suit. He does because he's got like that disheveled hair. hair. Yeah. Why did they leave the long hair? That doesn't work. It's like that 90s hair, like parted down the middle. I don't like the hair. You're right. But I think it's a take off of him still being new at Batman and still be. being so like upset about his parents being gone and he's still not very well kept mm-hmm. and maybe a little, uh, maybe kind of a vigilante at the time, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's definitely angry. He's definitely angry. You and, can tell that. I mean, everybody looks angry. Yeah. And it doesn't have the look of any of the other oh. DC movies. That's another thing that I like. It has its very own distinct look. Here's what they were explaining in this in this uh, video I watched is that what he was claiming about the Court of Owls thing is towards the end, there's a video playing and it looks like a, a debate and the what it's saying is you're involved too. And they thought that it's going to have like an involvement with Thomas and Martha Wayne with the court of owls and Bruce Wayne is going to start finding that stuff out, how his family has been tied into this stuff and they're trying to get him to be involved with it. But obviously he's Batman now and that's not going to happen. Big leaps there, but so there is, but I mean, he explains it a lot better than I just did with a lot more context, but, I don't know if it's going to go that deep into the whole Court of Owls thing, but if they are involved, I would be all for it. Well, I will say another thing that jumped out at me is the Batmobile looks awesome. Mm-hmm. It looks like a, like almost like a muscle car, like almost like a DeLorean kind of look to it with like an exposed yeah, rear end. Yeah, it engine. does kind of. Um, a blue flame, that that way you know it's hot. <laughs> yeah, 
because flames are the best propulsion mechanisms. <laughs> right. Of course they are. Um, but no, I think it looks great. I am way more excited about this movie than I had been previously after seeing that trailer, which is usually a good thing. Yes. The main thing that I'm excited for by this trailer, honestly, is Robert Pattinson looks phenomenal in the bat suit, and the bat suit looks awesome. Yes. Um, it really does. I don't like his like long haired. Obviously, I know he's got eye dark makeup on because he he's got the mask on. Mm-hmm. But at the end, he looks like the crow, and I don't like that. I love the crow. I, I mean, I like the crow, but um, I think this movie will probably be significantly delayed, but because it says currently in production still. Well, so here's the thing: as of this trailer coming out, Matt Reeves has said that there's only there's only been twenty five to thirty percent of the movie shot. Wow, well, that's it. Well, anyway. I'm excited. October 1, 2021 is the release date. It feels like a year. Uh, well, it is, more, it than is more than a year away. Um, it's a long ways away. It seems odd that it would come out in October. Really, that's not a big mm-hmm. movie time. But I don't know. It seems I don't like think it's more be. like a Christmas time. Do you think there's a bad time for a Batman movie? Um, I mean, certainly that's not when it traditionally when the but that's sometimes traditionally the doesn't matter. Bu- yeah, sometimes the biggest blockbusters are in odd times because they don't have competition. Exactly. They don't have competition, and it's the title. The title's going to bring in people to watch this. Yeah. The Joker came out in October. Um, while the film isn't scheduled for release till 2021, it's already received a spinoff show about the Gotham Police Department with Reeves producing. So that's something to look forward to as well. More shows about the Gotham Police Department. Yeah. I'm in for it. I, I just, don't care. The main thing I liked about it, I didn't get to say that before, was... The style looks right. It doesn't look cartoony like the other DC movies. No, it doesn't. But it doesn't look too photorealistic like some of the other movies. It strikes a good balance of what I would consider to be like a dark thriller. It's a very that's a good point because it it strikes a good balance between indie and big budget. Yeah, it does. It's like an it looks like kind of an indie take to this movie. But you can tell that obviously they're throwing money at it. Oh yeah, and like, all but you of, don't all get of the monies. It, I love the fact that it doesn't look like a you know Dark Knight Batman or. See that one was like shot almost too photorealistic. It was too photorealistic. This one doesn't look as like looking it's, back on it. This now. one I wouldn't consider the look to be. Oh, it looks like Batman in the real world. No, I wouldn't consider that to be the look. It really no. captures what I would say the Greg Capullo look of those early comics from that that run yeah it captures that look that it's like cartoony but not too cartoony but right real but not too real i so, completely agree almost with you. the look of the gotham tv show to be honest it kind of has that that tone to it yeah so the like the landscapes and the buildings and everything that you're in does look a lot like the gotham tv show i, I would agree even the police department does like the the police look like the police in the Gotham TV show. I, I'm interested to figure out when this is set. Like if this is going to be set in the 80s. I know, I don't know. It doesn't look like it's a current Batmobile. It looks like more like a 70s or 80s type vehicle. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know if they're even going to put a date to it, are they? I hope I they don't. But All right, so let's go on to the probably the number two big, big blowout of the event. And that was the first full-length trailer for Wonder Woman 1984. Yes. Um, and I feel like this movie has been, we've been talking about it for Forever. like three years now. It It's really, it, I think it has been in production for almost three years. Um, yeah, I think so. Because when did the original, like the first Wonder Woman come out? A long time ago. It had to have been 16 or 17. Yeah. And then they probably got in production with this right afterwards. Pretty soon, Gal Gadot is going to be like 80 years old. Too she's old not to be play playing this. Wonder Woman. Anymore. Well, Kristen Wiig, it will certainly be too old because she's significantly older than Gal Gadot. Yeah. Well, I will say um, I didn't like it nearly as much as the first teaser trailer. I'll be perfectly honest. The t- first teaser trailer felt super 80s and fun. It did. And this felt more DC movie-y. Correct. Um, not judging, not saying it's going to be bad. I'm just saying this definitely felt more like more of the same. It looks, it does look the same. Um, I think it'll still be fun I th- until, 
until the fighting starts. Yeah. Until they start actually fighting the big bad, which is Cheetah. And in this, um, in this trailer, you see a lot more of. And hmm, doesn't really blow me away. You should play the trailers as we talk about it because I forgot about this really cool scene where she's using her lasso to lasso lightning. Oh, she, I forgot about that. Yeah, and that is super cool. So I feel, but it's while it's super cool, it's also one of those things that DC does. They're like, let's make this really super cool moment happen. Yes. And that kind of takes you out of a movie sometimes. A lot of it does. I don't understand why they need to do that. Um, but so anyway, I, I don't know why they need to make everything so gloomy. I don't. I mean, I don't, when it comes to a Wonder Woman, I don't think Wonder Woman's gloomy. I don't think this looked that gloomy. It just looked very. Well, it, the, it's a little dark. They have when they fa- first have the fight scene with uh, Gal Gadot or Wonder Woman and Cheetah. It's like. She drops these wings off her back, and it's dark on top of a building. Yeah. It might be raining. I don't know. I, it looked the coolest is when they were back in, like, uh, wherever she's from, and they're having that whatever event. You know what I mean? Yeah, there is. In the Coliseum type thing. Yes. That's when this Wonder Woman works the best. Give us the bright blue ocean, the bright sky, the Greek yep. uh, Archopolises. Acropolises. Acropolis? Archipelagos? Nope, that's an island. <laughs> um, but anyway, no, I, I, I'm still, I'm definitely going to see it. I didn't have any interest in Kristen Wiig's character whatsoever. Not really. Um, I don't even know. I hope that that improves. To me, it, it really looks like um, they may not just they, they may just not have cut it well. You know, uh, maybe not. But it looked to me, it looks very Catwoman from Batman. It, which we've said from the beginning. Batman Returns. Though. We talked about this from... Michelle Pfeiffer Batman. I know. And that's what we talked about from the beginning is that's what she was probably stemming that character off of. She, It, it, it seems very similar to, to that. She looks like she's not funny. That's for sure. No, not funny. And she apparently has a lot, like a lot of strength. Yeah. Something happened to her and I'd like to know what. Because I'm not... I'm not deep into Wonder Woman. I don't, I don't know anything know. about Cheetah either. So. Yeah, I don't know anything about the the people she fights. Well, I they have know. to do something because they basically make it appear as though like Wonder Woman is basically a god. She seems right. all powerful, right? In this trailer, so to make a like a Cheetah character even compete with her doesn't make any sense. It doesn't to me, but she does it because she throws her around a little bit. Yeah. So, like she right here, they she lassos her, and Cheetah literally pulls her lasso and flings Wonder Woman around. That seems not possible to me. Um, Chris Pine is back. Of course, he's got the best laughs of the trailer. He's got the best scenes of the trailer. Mm -hmm. I don't know how now we're going to head into two Wonder Woman characters uh, movies where big budget, female led, woman superhero movies, and the best character is going to be. The man. The man. <laughs> in both of them. And I'm not just saying that because I am a man. Like, I want right. Wonder Woman to be the best character. I just feel like they gave the best jokes, the best lines, and the best personality to Chris Pine's character. They did. <laughs> they did at the end when he's changing outfits and stuff. Yeah. Really and, funny. And when he's in the jet and stuff like that. Yep. So, anyway, um, I'm in the bag for this movie. Of course, I, I was born in 1984. Um, you were, weren't movie you? Is a 1984. It was made for me, by me. If if it was made by you, make some changes about before me. we see it, please. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, Wonder Woman 84. Let's all go. Digitally, it's out there. Digitally buy it. Come November, right? Was it November? I didn't even pay attention to that. Uh, October 2nd. So okay. you're not going to see that in theaters. You are not going to go see that in theaters. I'm sorry. But uh, it's going to be there. I, I, I'm kind of excited for it. I'm going to watch it no matter what because I'm always in the bag for everything. Uh, all right. We talked about Dune. All right. Here's a quick one. I'm just going to throw out a quick one. It's kind of a people might not care about it. I think you'll care about it. You've seen all seasons of Teen Titans, haven't you? Um. Did you watch the second? Titans on DC? Or Titans, yes, just Titans. I have not seen the second season. I watched the first season. I enjoyed well, it quite a bit. They came out with uh, Titans season three. It has happened. It's filmed. It's ready to go. Uh, it's going to be released. 
apparently still on the DC Universe app, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, it's on HBO Max, too. Is it on? A- okay, I didn't know if they yeah. transferred it over. All right, well, DC Universe is going away, so it'll be on HBO Max then. Um, in this season, they all start to move to Gotham. They're going to move into Gotham, work out of Gotham, live in Gotham. And apparently, Jace- this is the season where Jason Todd will become Red Hood. Uh, yeah, I see that. And then also, they're announcing uh, Barbara Gordon. Yes. Um, and Scarecrow will be the main villain. Correct. Dr. Jonathan Crane. And so they're doing a little bit different because obviously Jason Todd had become Red Hood all stemming around the Joker and whatnot. Um, obviously they're not doing it that way, but I think that's pretty neat. I like how they're evolving these characters. I mean, Titans is a good show. Um, I don't know if it's enough to justify buying uh, HBO Max for that alone. Just no. I mean, there's more to HBO Max, but there's than a just lot that. more on there. And honestly, if you are just like a casual fan of comic book related, like superhero shows, mm-hmm. this is a good one. It's more adult than the Flash and Arrow. That's what I was gonna say. So think of it as a CW show, but rated R. Rated R, and yeah, without the, the lots of teeny violence angst. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, a lot of people that I know that listen that aren't necessarily big uh, superhero fans, they would like that show Mm -hmm. significantly. But turns out you can't get HBO Max anywhere. So. Right. They're making it as hard as possible for you to get the app. So I I don't know what to do. I I still can't get it on my Xbox. According to the HBO people, um, they said they keep trying to reach out to Amazon and Mr. Bezos won't return their calls. Just won't call them back. Really? Yeah. Is that how it works? You just call up Jeff Bezos and say, hey, I got this app yeah. for HBO. Well, I think when it's something that big, yeah, you talk to Jeff Bezos. I really? think he micromanages that company pretty significantly. And they're What not- makes you think that? I mean, what? Because I've read a lot of articles because I own some Amazon stock, so I keep kind of tabs on it. They are blowing stuff out of the water, by the way. They're, their they stock are? is up like 100%. Really? So year. I probably shouldn't buy any then. I don't know. I don't think it's getting any smaller. <laughs> no, there's only one not. problem with Amazon, and it the company is so I- inevitably tied to Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Like if something happened to him, the company crumbles. It, I, the company would not crumble. It'll crumble into ashes. But it would it be not as dynamic as it is. It would be more like an Apple or. It a, would be like Google. the fall of Rome all over again. Yeah, Nero. Caesar. Nero's Euros. <laughs> Caesar's dead. Et hey. tu brute? E tu brute. It's et. Et tu brute. Oh, I thought, I thought you had an X in there. There was no. Um, okay, I'm going to move on down the list because we got another big trailer for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Justice League Snyder Cut was thrown out there for everyone to see. And I tell you what. You can tell that it's changed. It's definitely different. <laughs> it gives you a glimpse of dark side. I don't think they reuse any scenes that I could really notice. Zack Snyder has come in and said they well, will not use one frame that he didn't shoot. Really? I didn't know that. No, you got to understand he shot most of the first movie. Right, I understand. But he's not using anything that Josh Whedon shot. That's not he, his that's not his movie. He said it's not my movie and it would not be right to steal that man's work. Yeah. I and completely so agree. They are it, it looks I mean, there are certain things that look similar, like there was an Aquaman scene that looked very similar. Yeah. Um, but, you know, other than that, it seems like pretty much a completely different movie. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Steppenwolf is completely different. You see Darkseid, which is amazing. That and he's Steppenwolf there. doesn't seem like a main character. He's not the main character at all, yeah. which he was not supposed to be to begin with. He's like the henchman of Darkseid. Basically, it will be four hours. It will run as a mini series in four one hour chunks. Oh, this I, I was not aware of. Um, yep. Sometime in 2021. Um, and they're hoping to release globally, but they haven't figured out that yet. That's going to be difficult to do on HBO Max. But why do you think that'll be difficult to do? Because, you know, they have different. Uh, all these streaming companies have different deals in different parts of the country. Oh, I see what you mean. Or different okay. parts of the world. I thought you meant it'd be hard to release a four-hour miniseries on HBO Max. Oh, no, and no. I don't know why that would be. but um, So I think it looks cool. I mean, I'm definitely, definitely going to watch it. I'm very excited yes. for it. 
I don't even really remember the Justice League movie because it wasn't very good. Well, remember how they had the whole reshoots and Superman had to have his upper lip uh, redone because he had a mustache because he was filming the whole Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. And they wouldn't allow him to shave his mustache off, so then they edited his lip. What a joke. And his whole mouth. What, this is it a $300 so million fake. dollar movie, you know? And it looked so bad. It honestly didn't, didn't jump out at me. I didn't. Know it jumped that. out at me when I was sitting in the theater watching it. I am an overly positive person. If you would have and not I still known enjoyed, about it ahead of time, would I, you have I didn't that? know about it ahead of, ahead of time. I okay. just thought, like, I didn't know exactly what was going on. I just thought, man, his mouth looks dumb. Like, what? What did they do to his mouth? And then afterwards, I looked up, looked it up because I noticed it, and that's when I found out what they had to do. That to me is absolutely ridiculous. Why would you? Why would you allow that? If I can see it in the seats, which I don't notice much, I'm kind of dumb, and I just watch the big picture of it all. If I could notice that, they had to have seen that in the final editing and cuts. They had to have been like, yeah. Well, Looks pretty good. I yeah. like this. Unbelievable. I just don't know how you let that go through. That to me says it's kind of a failure, which was ve- it was a very for- forgettable movie, um, and one you wouldn't go back and rewatch. This one hopefully is different. Still going to be dark, obviously. Um, oh, but yeah. you do get a black a black suit Superman. The tone doesn't look significantly different. No, it doesn't. But when you're dealing with dark side, it kind of makes sense. That's true. A little bit more than it does with just the Steppenwolf character. Hopefully they get rid of some of the hokey humor. That didn't work. Yes, we'll find out. Because the Flash has a little bit of that hokey humor. But I think he was the funniest one out of all of them. Yeah, that was fine. It's more like there's some lines that Batman had that weren't good. And there was some other stuff. Yeah. I don't know. So um, we're all going to look forward to that. Next one, we got tons more to cover. And we don't have that much more time to cover. We do. It. So Gotham Knights the Batman uh, yes. or Arkham game series, basically. Um, the newest one coming out would be uh, Gotham Knights. The developer behind Batman or Arkham Origins revealed its new game, a co-op adventure. A, I don't know if you caught that. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, starring Nightwing. I love co-op games. I don't like multiplayer games, but I can deal with a co-op game. So that's a big difference with this game is that there is a, you know, the main storyline that you play you can play it single player, but you can play with two people at the same time. Right. You know, playing this game, that differentiates it a lot. And I'll talk about it after you give your little review. But the Marvel Avengers game that's coming out um, is that same way. No, we'll talk about it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, starring Nightwing, Robin, Batgirl, and Red Hood. I guarantee you get to play a little Batman too. They haven't said that, but I guarantee you, Batman's going to be at the end of this game or beginning before he gets. I don't know. As they protect the city following the apparent death of Batman, they'll face off against the Court of Owls, which we talked about last week. That Mm -hmm. was going to be the main villain, based off of the comic series from Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo in the early 2010s. Um, The game looks just like most of the other Arkham games, which looks great. It looks very good. Uh, The gameplay looks very, very good. I don't know how I feel about not playing a lot as Batman, but to be honest, some of my favorite parts of the Arkham games were playing as Nightwing. Nightwing Yeah, so I'm pretty excited to be able to play as Nightwing and Red Hood. And Robin. And Robin. Robin. Yeah, and and Batgirl, to be honest. like I think all of them will be really fun in their own individual ways. Why do you see why do you say her last and then to be like to be honest? Oh, uh, because it doesn't it wouldn't be a character you would think I would like because really? I'm so Cause obsessed with Batman. She's a just cuz she's a woman? No, because she's like, not Like you're fine Batman. with Night one, Nightwing and Robin. I am. But you're you have to be shocked that you would be even interested in being Batgirl. Correct. Yes. Okay. You have to be if you're talking about me. Yes. <laughs> um I think actually Gameplay wise, uh, Batgirl looks like one of the most interesting. She she plays like the Batman character, absolutely. And Nightwing's obviously going to be a beat her up, beat him up guy. So is Red yeah. Hood. I didn't really get a good glimpse of the Robin combat. They don't really but, show much Robin combat, but it's right probably the, the Tim Blake Robin who's my favorite. Yep, um, Tim Drake. Drake, sorry. Um, looks cool. I mean, there's not a lot to say about it. Watch the trailer if you want to see. And then there's a gameplay trailer that I sent to you. Yes, I mean the trailer. I think is very good. That's, yeah, and the game. I mean, tri- the, I mean, it looks like. Besides just the gameplay, I'm just saying, like the story that they that they show you in this trailer and the way it's 
narrated and the everything about it is just very good to me here's th what's coming out like this arkham game is blowing everything out of the water on the internet for games that are going to be released on new platforms and immediately people started judging it onto the new marvels game that's coming out uh, marvels avengers it's a new game that's supposed to be coming out at the end of the year i think november that game's supposed to come out and then this arkham game doesn't come out until next spring but uh there that marvel game has been getting a ton of criticism because the character design is kind of poor um, apparently people are hating on black widow and what her gameplay and style looks like um, and it's kind of a button masher like we were talking about before there's not much to it it's so is the batman arkham games it is it is but there's a lot more to do yeah you know it's not a very linear game it's you can jump around and go to different places this is a little more linear is what it looks like. And they're weighing it more on the online side of things. Like it's more online cooperative. Yeah, That's the only way that. you can do it. It's either online cooperative or single player. And people are hating on it because this game just came out and said, hey, you've got a co-op mode where two people can play together and do the whole story all together. Yeah. And, they, and the styling the look of it, the gameplay, it just looks a lot better and more. It's um, definitely going to be big because in the gameplay trailer, they're playing a little bit and, and he says this, this is about 40 hours into the game or something or 30 hours in or something. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember what he said. So it's going to be a big, it's huge. Um, I'm excited about it for sure. I like the Arkham games. My only criticism of the Arkham games ever has been that it's very repetitive in your combat and stuff like that. Yeah. The combat is, it's basically Pretty repetitive. dropping down from gargoyles, snatching people up. Isn't you know, that what you want to do just going as Batman, from though? other gargoyles in a rounder room. But it's cool, and I'm into it. Um, I, I'm, it's been a long time since I played one of those games, mm. and they're fun to play. They're very fun to play. I haven't played one since I lived in town, Mazan, at least. So that's been since 20, probably early 2015. Yeah. It's five years, Chris. It's a long time. I'm going to have to get my thumbs ready. <laughs> grease them up. I'm going to have to grease up my thumbs, maybe pizza, work them out. Get some pizza grease on there and start. I'm going to have to do thumb lifts. Yeah. You know, where you just lay your hand flat and lift your hand with your thumbs yeah, like, like a, a push-up. Yeah. For your hands. Yeah. You can but, get one of those grip grip strengtheners. I, I'm going to need one of those. A small one. Yeah. I got to work up to the adult size. Yeah. Well, I don't even know if my hand can fit around in an adult size one. I've got small hands. All right, on to the next news. I'm doing thumb lifts right I now. I see that. Um, the Flash, if you didn't know. I did know. A panel revealed Barry Allen's new costume, which was made mm -hmm. by Batman. It was. Um, Looks like a sleeker design, a little less cumbersome than the, you know, it looked like a plastic suit to me in the Batman, or in the Justice League movie. We get hints of the possibility of revisiting classic DC movies with Danny Elfman's Batman theme playing in the background. Um, concept art also showed The Flash teaming up with Michael Keaton's version of The Dark Knight. So that's what I was going to say, is that they're saying that they have a team up throughout this whole movie. And they're fighting together. Um, Greg Berlanti has said he wants to include more DC film characters in TV crossovers. After Ezra Miller's Flash meant Grant Gustin's version of the character in last year's Crisis event. So, um, I mean, that's really all there is. To, it's just like little hints, possibilities. Right. Um, the suit looks fine. Whatever. Because they haven't started any like principal photography for this or anything yet, have they? No, uh, no. 2022, I believe. Is oh, my to gosh. Be. Everything's so far away. Uh, um, next big one. James Gunn's Suicide Squad had a kind of a mini docu trailer i guess you it, could call it it was um idris elba playing D dead Deadshot. Shot, i thought this says blood sport <laughs> <laughs> that's not it's that's Deadshot. not what it is uh john cena as peacemaker and uh pete davidson blackguard bunch of other new characters in it the it polka looks, dot man yeah it looks freaking good i tell you what now we were talking about how uh, Batman, the new Batman trailer does a good job of blending things. This one does a very good job of making it comic booky 
and it looks like a comic book movie. It looks like a comic book on screen. Um, and I think this will be perfect for Suicide Squad. I do. I, I, it looks like a blending of... It doesn't look like a Marvel movie. No, but you know what it did kind of remind me of? Seeing them run through the sand and stuff is the X-Men First Class. Yeah, it kind of looks like that style. It looks more comic booky, And uh, they finally give something for Margot Robbie to do. Yeah. That seems she, interesting in some way. She, she had came out and said that this character or this this styling of... Uh, Harley Quinn is going to be completely different than the other two that she's done. Well, this says it's not a direct sequel um, to the 2016 film, though it has many returning characters. So they might just be just disregarding that for the last one. Which is, um, I think we're all okay with. I don't think anybody even remembers it. <laughs> I know. The only, way, the only reason the people that are listening remember it is because we've talked about it. Yeah. That's it. But it looks really, really fun. It's a big movie, according to James Gunn. This is a very big movie. He said they, it's the biggest movie he's ever done. That's it, bigger than Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. It's hard to believe. I, it's hard to believe when he says something like that. I think it's just hype. Yeah, me too. You know, what's that called? Hyperbole? Hi- hyperbole? I don't know. Yeah. Hyperbole, where you try to blow something up bigger than what it really is. Hyperbole. And I think that's what he's doing because it's the movie he's filming right now, but... Um, it looks like it's going to be that way. I yeah. mean, it's hard to tell everything from the trailer, but I don't know if I'm sold on some of the characters as King of yet. Shark is in it. Yeah, King Shark is in it as a main character. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Um, all right, moving on from that, um, they also released Suicide Squad video game they did. from Rocksteady. The, and they, Rocksteady um, made the, some of the first Arkham games. Mm-hmm. So about like halfway through, there was a change in studio, right? Yes. Rocksteady. Did they also make Grand Theft Auto? No, that's Rockstar. Oh, Rock. Okay. That's Rockstar Games. Well, they made the original, like the first couple um, Arkham games. Um, it'll be co-op up to four players. You know, they don't really show a lot in the trailer. It's more of a teaser trailer. Um, and it's more like in the story mode. But... It looks cool. looks fine. It does look cool, and I'll probably get it and play it just like I would any other. Um, Just because I've never played a game like that, I don't think. Yeah, I don't know exactly what to expect from it. They don't give you any gameplay footage. So, from what I can see anyway, it looks like a produced trailer almost. It does, yeah. Um, But I I didn't even know that that was going to be a thing. I had no idea that there was going to be... No, I didn't either. uh, a Suicide Squad game at all. And it's kind of interesting to me that you're going to be playing kind of the villain. Yeah. You know, the, throughout uh, Suicide the whole... Squad kill the Justice League. Yeah. So you're attacking. They show Superman flying in front of you and basically disintegrating someone mm-hmm. in air. Um, and you've got to kind of choose what you do. Yeah. I think that's pretty interesting. Like it might be a little bit too conflicting to me. To have to kill the good guys. Oh, come on. It's just a game. It is just a game. But also, do you believe that they could do it? No. And that they'll exactly. end up teaming up together. It's just like every time they do hug? a so-and-so versus so-and-so, they end up teaming up towards a bigger villain at the end. Oh, you're right. Yeah. That is what will happen. Um, Moving on, because we got a couple more. And we have to do our top 10. Yes. Um, there was a little teaser trailer um, for Black Adam starring The Rock. Um, yeah. It was like a cartoon version. Um, I'm assuming it's not going to be a cartoon movie. I think it's a live action movie. It's a live action movie. They just haven't done anything haven't, with it. Yeah. It. it whatever. And I, I don't know even. It, it's not even worth talking about yet. I don't, I don't know it. anything about Black Adam. I, I'm sure it'll be good because The Rock's in it. Yeah, it just doesn't. Great. Right now, it doesn't do anything for me, but it is something that's coming out and will probably be a huge, big budget movie. Um, Aquaman, they gave a release date 2022. Shazam 2, they gave a release date 2022. Um, And they show Sinbad. Shazam Fury of the Gods. Um, Included an extended appearance by Sinbad. Mm -hmm. Um, It's it's hard to tell if that's in the movie they sent. Big one here is an ap- adaptation of Neil Gaiman's Sandman was announced for Netflix last year, and the creator teased additional details during the Saturday panel. Gaiman confirmed work on Sandman for Netflix is still continuing and will be slightly looser but still faithful to the books 
Gaiman said the pandemic has allowed for more work on the scripts, along with further tailoring of a story to fit a different time period. Yes. They're saying that it's going to be set in present day. Yeah. It's going to start in 1916. Um, but the thing that happens in Sandman number one, the point, the story starts, it's not 1988. It's now. Um, so not much other details for that. Uh, that's another one that is kind of like Dune for me where I'm very excited for it. Oh, I'm extremely excited for that. And, I, and Neil Gaiman is probably just knowing that Neil Gaiman is writing these scripts and directly involved with it. I felt this way about Greg Rucka and the whole old guard thing, but and we all know how the I felt about is, that movie. Gaiman has a long history in film and television. And, and he's a freaking genius, Chris. He is a genius. He's a genius writer that will not let Sandman be done by anybody else. He he's going to he's taking it over. He's going to do it. That's his baby and it's going to be done well. I know it's going to be done well. It can't be done perfect because Alan Rickman is dead, but right. You can get close. Right. He would be too old. Anyway. Harry Potter. <laughs> And that's it. That's it for DC Fandom. That's all I got, too. You covered all the bases that I had. So, are we ready to do our top 10? Yes, that was the news. We're going on to the top 10 breakfast cereals of all time. Super subjective because it's what you like to eat. Um, but this is what I like to eat, Chris. So, this was suggested to me uh, by my wife, actually. As that's a topic. really good. And she also said, we had a little conversation before we came here, and she said, you have to sing all the theme songs for each cereal. <sighs> and I said, what are you talking about? What theme songs? They didn't have theme songs. Yes, they did. No, they had slogans. No, like a lot of them in the 90s had songs involved with them. Well, they were like songs for the commercials, but they weren't necessarily right. theme songs. I don't know. I think it's kind of a theme song. Uh, well, I don't know any. Theme Neither songs do I. Yet. I'd have to look them all up. We do have to. We, we'll do the slogans if we can remember them. Yeah, I'll have to look them up. Um. So should we get started? I think so. I'm ready to go. All right. My number 10. Top 10 breakfast top cereals. Top 10. Oh, man. I'm nervous. My number 10 is one that it's always a little disappointing. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah. But it's still really good. Yeah. And that is Cookie Crisp. Okay. Cookie Crisp. I've always really enjoyed this. Yeah. I mean, it's always, it's especially good when. I see what you mean, the disappointing part. Yeah. Of you're it. always like, wait a minute. These don't take, taste like cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, but it's still like good. And it was a dog, right? Wasn't it a it was dog like a that wolf was. a for a dog. Yeah. It was like a really bad looking dog. Yeah. He was a mean looking dog. No, uh, like I thought it was like it didn't even look like a dog to me. He was the cookie, cr cookie crisp crook. So he was like stealing cookie yeah. crisp, and then there's been different ones through the years. But any he, he howled. Didn't oh, they? they did. They changed the mascot in 1977 because they wanted to get rid of the cookie the crook, cr the cookie crook, and the cookie cop from their mascot spots. Um, so Chip, the dog, went straight and ditched his criminal mask to become the face of Cookie Crisp. Um, it's always too hard when you eat it too fast and too soggy if you leave it too long. And, it, and that happens in the blink of an eye, yeah, my I mean, friend. Yeah, you got to really get after the Cookie Crisp. But I still like it. I, I've always loved that one. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I do. So F you. <laughs> okay. Um, and what is the what is the slogan? Because we can have slogans. The, is um, it like oh cookie crisp or something like that? It's something like that. Chanting or, or is it cookie crisp? Something like that. Oh, uh, I got I I don't know. You're better at looking these things up. I mean, I don't know that one. I think it's cookie something crisp. like what I just did. But oh yeah, Chip would howl the cereal's name. Cookie, cookie crisp. crisp. Yes, I remember that. Uh, and each ad before he and his master were inevitably foiled by the cookie cop. The so, cookie cop. The cookie cop. That is the case. So that is my number not, uh, 10 and your number 10. My number 10 is a cereal that has been ra around for quite some time. And it's the one where they always used to say, give it to Mikey. He'll try anything. Don't tell me you put life cereal in the I top 10. I love life cereal. It is. I think shit. it should have been up higher than 10, but I'm going to give it 10 because there are so many more that 
are better. But I mean, it it's a solid cereal. It's another one that you could, if you wait too long, get super soggy. But it never bothered me when it was soggy. You could leave Life cereal in a bowl for forty five minutes, and I'd eat the rest of it. I honestly don't remember what it tastes like. It's uh, just those little white balls, right? No, Life cereal is a square. Uh, yeah, okay. Brown piece of life. <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste it's, like? I can't remember. It tastes like good. It's got sugar on it. Oh, it looks like a like a like a little wafer. Sugar? Like a yeah, okay. Kind of a little it's rice made flour. Made by the Quaker Oats. It company. is, and uh, it says the cereal is distinguished by its characteristic brown checkered squares in a finer pattern than Czech cereal. Yeah, it looks like Czechs basically. All and right, I, I, I mean, love it. I'm. Whatever you want to say about your life. You uh, throw you throw some bananas in that thing, and you've yeah. got yourself a meal. Bananas and cereal. That's the jam right now. Isn't it? Isn't it the jam? All right. Let's go to my number nine. Give it to Mikey. Um, I'll just give you the slogan. Okay. And you have to see if you can guess. Okay. Because I, I didn't know the slogan for this all one. Right, I had to look all right, it up. All right. uh, I'm the, ready. I'm the original slogan was, oh, well, that's going to give it away. It's Reese's for breakfast. Reese's Puffs. Yeah. Um, Gross. I don't remember that cereal. Oh, it's so good. Have you ever had it? I don't know if I. I don't know if I have. To it's be just honest. little alternating balls. Some are peanut butter and some are chocolate. Yes. So I, I. I. know I have. I think I have had it, but it was never one that I used used to get all the time. No, we My didn't parents get it. Never got it. We almost never got it. But it is actually good. I've had it recently. Um, it is really good. It doesn't taste like candy. I mean, no, it's not like the actual yeah. Reese's. I mean, it has puffs. It tastes like peanut butter Captain Crunch mis- mixed with cocoa cup, uh, cocoa puffs. That's kinda. good. I mean, yeah, it is good. That would be good. I I haven't had it. I'm gonna have to go back and try it then. So I like that one. I but it, again was one that we barely ever got. I never. I don't think I ever got it as a kid. I think I had to physically buy that on my own. I would agree. That's. Probably the same situation for me. I don't yeah. remember ever having it with it. I mean, it didn't come out till 1994. So. What do you mean? You were only 10. Yeah. I mean, but by that time, we had already developed cereal preferences. <laughs> that's true. A newcomer isn't going to get itself into the lineup very easily. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, you okay. know, you could only, you, you, you'd get an occasional new, I still new got, cereal, like a Ghostbusters cereal or a Teenage Mutant Turtles I know, Turtle but here's cereal, the thing. We had so many cereal commercials back then. Do you see cereal commercials now? I, do you see commercials at all? Well, no, I really don't. I mean, you see advertisements here and there that aren't... You don't see little kid like toy commercials that I used to see all the time for, you know, like Hot Wheels race car tracks or uh, Bebop and Rocksteady. Or anything like that, like in no cereal commercials, nothing. So I, when I was a kid, I used to see these new cereal commercials and think, I need to try that. Mom, I need this cereal. Did you see it? it I need this it, cereal. It worked. The, and it did those work. Those commercials worked. And I would go grocery shopping with my mom and I would seek out those cereals. And you would run down the aisles. Pulling the little coupons from the little. Yes. For, uh, Jewel. Jewel had those. Did uh, Walmart have them it too? It wasn't Jewel. It wasn't Eagles. Eagle. It was Eagle Country Market. It was Eagles, yep. Uh, but we were a DNS family. We were a big-time DNS. But once in a while, we'd get to go to Eagle, and you'd get to pull those coupons out of the little machines that fed them out automatically. Yes, and you just stand there and pull them all out. <laughs> yeah, or just run down the aisles <laughs> grabbing as many as you could. Yeah. I love those. <laughs> uh, I don't think they had those at DNS, but maybe they did. No, I don't think they did either. Um, so that was your number nine. That was my number nine. Reese's Puffs, was it? Yeah, Reese's Puffs. Okay, my number nine. And it's not Reese's, people. It's not Reese's. The clue is in the pieces, right? It's not Reese's Pieces. It's no. Reese's Pieces. They there rhyme. was a, a man named Reese, and they are his cups yeah. and his pieces. <laughs> it is Reese's Pieces. Correct. You get it? Yeah. All right. Reese Witherspoon's Pieces. Right. Or without her spoon. Without her spoon. One of the two. Yeah. Um, my number nine, I'm going to get, I'm going to give you the slogan and you try to guess it. Okay. You're never going to get it. Ready? Cookie crisp. <laughs> <laughs> number nine. Cookie crisp for you. Oh, we're, it is. we're close. We're close. We are very close. I loved cookie crisp as a kid 
And then I saw it in the store not too long ago. I mean, maybe a couple years ago, whatever it was, but relatively. I know, have the same close. story. And I went and tried it again, and I was just so disappointed in it. <laughs> but I loved it so much as a kid. I remember eating it as much as I, my parents would buy it. I, I'm going to tell you what. And I had to put it in my top 10 because of that. I was disappointed. However, I still liked to eat it. <laughs> yes, I agree. I know. It's weird. I do feel like it changed, though. If it tasted, it changed to me. I don't know if it was the taste, the consistency of the cereal itself. The, the milk or the whatever end is very good. After the cereal is gone, is, yes. it has a very good flavored milk. I agree. So I, that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. So I had to, I had to pay homage to the old Cookie Crisp because it's good. Um, and honestly, what sold me on this stuff is that it wasn't a little round ball or a small square. It was a round thing that looked like a cookie. Yeah, they went for it, and they, I bought it. Yeah, I bought, they, they sold me. They on even that. had little chocolate chips in there. I know. It's good. It's amazing. Uh, my number eight, um, I don't remember. Maybe maybe you remember the slogan, but I need to... Oh, man. Well, uh, I don't remember what the slogan is. Okay. It is follow your nose. It always knows. Follow your nose. Follow your nose? Yes, that is what the character for this cereal would say. Follow your nose. 2K and Sam? Yeah. Fruit Loops. Yes, Fruit okay. Loops is my number eight. Fruit Loops, yes. Um, that And that is probably to date like the most often cereal I, I would eat. That's... Because they always come in those little box. We always get those little boxes of cereal now. Oh, you do? That you pr- yeah, in like the 12 pack with I can't, different flavors. I can't do that. That's not enough cereal. It's not enough cereal. It That's... drives me crazy. Do you remember when we were kids, they had those? My mom would get those too. And um, you could turn the box into, into the bowl. a bowl. Yes. <laughs> and could. it would get soggy and gross, <laughs> yeah. but it had like a wax lined box. Yes. Anyway, so we still get those sometimes, even though it's dumb because you pay probably like three times for the actual cost oh, yes. of the cereal. Um, you're better off to buy the whole boxes and then just throw them away if you don't use them all. It'd be cheaper. It would be cheaper, a lot cheaper. Um, but anyway, it's like probably the most common cereal eaten around our house. Sometimes the marshmallow version, usually the regular version. Um, yeah. It's not great, but it's okay. So that's that's that bowl of cereal that I was eating the other night that I talked <laughs> yeah. about earlier in the show. It's I much sat better down. soggy than it is hard, yeah. in my opinion. I agree. Um, you, it's really hard to get that last little soggy one. You got to chase it around. You the do bowl. have to chase it around. Like there's some sort of force on your spoon that keeps it away. There's a repellent with all, force to with, spoons. With all cereal, yeah. it does that. Here's my one gripe. My only gripe is that I feel like the milk at the end of Fruit Loops is substandard. Like, it's substandard, and it leaves like a film. This weird, it does like, chalky. It's like a film. chalky f- thing. In your mouth, doesn't it? Yes, it it's does. weird. It's uh, interesting that you it's just my said only. That. It's I my only great thought about that, but it's just so common. Um, I don't know. I like it. Uh, yeah, I, I love that. What that was your number eight. That so my, my number eight. Um, let's see. I guess I got to find the slogan for this one. This one will be easy for you to guess, I think, because it's they say. They're magically delicious. Oh, Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. What a standard in my household as a child. Zero. Barely ever got it as a kid. Really? Barely ever eaten it as an adult. Um, what is your problem? Are you? Are, did you grow up in Soviet Russia? <laughs> yes. In Russia. <laughs> in Soviet Russia, we have no marshmallow. In Russia, <laughs> Lucky Charms eat you. <laughs> <laughs> Leprechaun eats you in Soviet Russia. Nobody's lucky in Russia. <laughs> no. Vodka. Uh, I that I did. I have always loved Lucky Charms. They have been so good to me in my daily life. Amy loves Lucky Charms. She's the one who actually buys those all the time. It's not one that I would necessarily grab, obviously, because. Um, it, because it's my number eight and I have things above it, 
but it is something that if that's all I had at home, I would not complain. I would eat that until I die. Well, I will say one thing. I don't like them, and I think they're garbage. You're stupid. Sorry. You are straight stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, they're okay. It they're is a good balance. Good. There's a balance there between you, flavorless whatever. Little wafer things. Wafers, I don't know what they are. Flavorless wafers puffs. and sugary marshmallows. Here, here's the problem with them is that you eat the marshmallows out of there. And then, then you're you just left with that boring cereal. Mush. And that gets mushy quick. It does, but... That's a one that's better to eat before it gets too mushy. And that's rare. That's it a rarity, rare. and especially in my mouth. My mouth wants something squishy, right? Yeah. But these turn into almost like wet styrofoam. <laughs> and you don't want to eat wet styrofoam. Yeah, that's true. If any of you have ever thought about eating it, don't. <laughs> not You can eat Lucky Charms, not the wet styrofoam. Yeah, right. That's what you don't want to eat. Um, okay. So that was your number eight. Yes. My number seven. I don't even know if it has a theme song, honestly. Um, so I'm just going to sing the theme song for the show that it's based off of. Okay. It's a yabba dabba do day. A yabba do day. No, we'll it's a, a, it's, it's a yabba do time, isn't it? I don't know. One of those things. It's a yabba dabba do time. My Bam Bam? Something about Bam Bam. We'll have a day on time. Oh, Barney, my pebbles. That's the thing. Fruity song. pebbles. Yes, fruity pebbles. Um, that is my number seven. We're, I really enjoy it, fruity pebbles. That's one we got a lot as kids. I did I've too. I've had zero times as an adult. But immediately upon pouring milk into a bowl of fruity pebbles, it becomes like a slurry. <laughs> it is. It is a slurry. That is the best way to describe that. Is a slurry because they they stay hard for I don't know maybe a minute. No, I think maybe a minute you'll get some crunch out of that. But because you got to really press them down with a spoon. Yeah, they float. They do float. They pack on top of each other. They're like little way like light wafers they're like thin flat rice flat. krispies they're that's exactly what they are i think i think they're pressed out rice krispies and they they stack on top of each other so well that you gotta push them down in the milk otherwise you do have these hard crispy things on top that you really just don't want to chew on yeah you gotta get them wet and they will <laughs> instantly <laughs> slurify they do and i love them <laughs> and it's great when they get slurified they oh it's so good that's the best um, and that's one you could eat a hundred bowls of, and it just never fills you up. You could you eat a whole box of them. That's the the real problem is that you got to call Walter Brimley, yeah, Wilford, Brimley. Wilford Brimley, Wilfred, Brimley. Wilfred Brimley, after you eat ninety seven bowls of fruity pebbles because you're gonna need some diabetes supplies. Listen, you're gonna need some testing supplies, some testing supplies from Liberty Medical. <sighs> Um, yeah, but I do love them. So that's my number seven. And your number seven is again, my number seven is like a, just a stalwart of cereals. It's been around forever. Those ones suck. They don't suck, Chris. And you know what the slogan of this is? Be happy, be healthy. I don't even know. Be happy, happy, be healthy. Oh, uh, honey nut Cheerios. Honey nut cheerios chris honey nut cheerios i mean i'm a fan another one you throw some banana in it and that's a meal you know what is that's not just cereal that is a hearty heart healthy meal when i grew up <laughs> yeah i'm sure <laughs> when i grew up we were we had we were definitely a cheerios house cheerios house yeah, we were just too. regular cheerios uh-huh with banana and a couple spoonfuls of sugar yep every morning that's what I, we did the same so maybe some strawberries if it got wild um, I didn't, <laughs> that is wild. I didn't even know. I mean, I've seen Honey Nut Cheerios. Didn't know. Never had them until I was an adult, like in the last ten years. No way. Swear to God, never had them. Didn't really think much about it. Never thought about it. And then I had them, and they're real. Wow, good. they're so good. <laughs> I we had regular Cheerios for a long time, but I remember. I guess I don't really remember the day we got Honey Nut Cheerios, but I remember having them and never wanting regular Cheerios ever again. Oh, they're so much better than regular Cheerios. Amy bought a box. This is not too long ago. A giant family-sized box yep. of regular Cheerios the other day. Or uh, 
again, not the other day, but relatively uh, in the past, close past. And I chastised her so terrible over this regular box of Cheerios. I was like, who is going to eat this? Why did you buy it? I've got to add so much to this. Nobody will ever eat regular Cheerios. They're again. going to go stale. And like, I'm not going to eat these. And she's like, oh, really? I thought you liked Cheerios. Yeah, Honey Nut Cheerios. Why would you buy these regular dry pieces of shit in this box? <laughs> and now she knows. Yeah. And I didn't eat any of them. Now and you she's got to use them to make some sort of a crispy treat with them, like mix them with marshmallows. You can make like Rice crispy treats out oh, of Cheerios. That's what I was going to bring up about the Fruity Pebbles thing is, uh, have you ever had the Fruity Pebbles Rice crispy treats? Nope, but I want them now. Oh, my Lord. Game changer. <laughs> Game changer. I'm in for that. All right, number, my number seven was Honey Nut Cheerios. It's very good. My number six is, I didn't know the slogan. I had to look it up, I'll be honest. Um, the slogan is uh, called The Kid in You. The slogan was a kid, The Kid in You. The slogan was aimed at adults who were concerned with their perceived maturity, but still wanted a sweet-tasting children's cereal. You can't look it up. Oh, I'm not. I'm okay. not. Um, the kid in the you. The kid in you campaign. Is what I, it was have called. No, I have no idea. It is a little cereal called Frosted Mini Wheats. Frosted Mini Wheats. That was a kid in you. I mean, it might have been from hmm. the '80s. I don't know, but um, either way, I love me some Frosted Mini Wheats. This was a mainstay in my household as I was a child. Mm-hmm. They're like little bales of hay. <laughs> They are. The, I love them. The roughage of them is great. They have the perfect amount of sweetness, and when they get soggy, mm, buddy, oh my there, gosh, it's on. so good. Hold on, they got a little bit of like sweetness inside too. They got like something in the middle. I think. I don't think they do at all. No? I think it's just hay. I don't know, but I love them. I I have always and you enjoyed feel them. Feel healthy well. eating them, even though they're obviously gonna be terrible for you. The 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 problem with those is that you get about. Even with the minis, you get about eight of them in a bowl. <laughs> like, yeah, yes. You just don't get very many of them. Yes, you got to have a big, that big bugs bowl. Me. They made some with a filling at one point where you bit into them and they, they had did. a filling in them. I don't remember what it was, but I had them. Those are good, too. They're all good. I think it was frosted mini wheat fillers. Oh, raisin filling. Oh, that was non-frosted. That's not the one. It's the one that your mom would buy because she thought it looked healthy. Again, and it's still delicious for children. Who's going to buy non-frosted mini wheats? What kind of savage or like heathen are what you? Kind of that sad sack individual are you? Goes and buys an unfrosted wheat. The same kind of motherfucker that buys grape nuts. <laughs> yes, exactly. If you are a grape nut fan. Get out of here. I, Quit listening. We don't want you as a listener of the episodes. I, I'm, I'll say it. I, I want, want, I want to tell you something that happened with me with grape nuts. I had a completely wrong understanding of what, what grape nuts were. As We always had grape nuts in our house. My, <laughs> my dad would eat them, right? My Why? dad would eat grape nuts. I, apparently, they're good for you. I don't know. They are? Are they literally nuts from a grape? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, apparently, they're healthy for you. They don't have any sugar in them. They're just like... It's like roughage. It's like grain. You're eating a bowl of grain. <laughs> well, that's not what I want. Um, anyway, so I always thought I liked them as a kid. And that persisted until I got a little bit older. Because I think I had a com- confused thing in my head where I thought grape nuts were the same thing as granola. Granola, I, delicious. Delicious, yes. Grape nuts, demon from hell. <laughs> yeah, straight up demon. Uh, uh, so like recently not recently but you know as an adult i got a box of grape nuts i'm like oh i remember these from when i was a kid they're amazing my parents always had them in the house dumped it in a bowl ate them and it's like munching on uncooked rice (laughs) it's awful worse than that actually it's It's so bad yeah my dad would mix them with other cereals so he'd like get a concoction going okay have you ever done that with cereals mixed them together um like he would the do cereal, it like healthy cereal. I know we're talking. I'm talking about the cereal that. No, I've never done discussing. it with kids' cereals. No. I've seen people do that before, where they mix two different cereals. You don't need to be doing that. I don't. Don't do that. I don't know if I want that in my life. I don't need that. You're wrong for doing it. Yeah, I kind of agree. Uh, Frosted mini wheats, love them. I I thought they'd be higher, honestly, because I really do like them. 
but that was my number six. Okay, my number six is a Yabba Dabba Doo time Fruity Pebbles. Ooh, Because I love those damn slurries of Fruity Pebble. It doesn't get better than the slurry, man. It doesn't. It really doesn't. I, I feel like... So I didn't put... Spoilers, I guess. I didn't put Cocoa Pebbles on my list, even though I really, really do like them a lot. I just felt like Fruity Pebbles outshadowed them so much hmm. that I didn't I didn't do it. Hmm. But hmm. maybe we'll find out later. But again, <laughs> if you can if you get some Fruity Pebbles, you make them into a, a I guess a form of Rice Krispie treat, it would be a Fruity Pebble if you, treat. If you leave them in the in the bowl long enough, you can actually put them in a caulking gun. <laughs> and you can use yeah. them as cock. Yes. And then you can eat the cock. Yeah. And then redo it. Yeah. I guess just keep redoing that cycle you can just of eating it cock. Into your mouth. I got, yeah. It's like okay. a paste. That's gross. My That's, that's another one though that's kind of chalky. It can be kind of chalky. I always remember liking that that milk after the I don't but know. But see it soaks up so much milk there isn't a lot left. There isn't. You always had to add new milk. When you paired, poured a second bowl, yeah, you some, oh you had some, to some cereals you don't have to do that, but you always had to do that. Fruity Pebbles, you absolutely do. Same with mini wheats. Yeah, um, mini wheats milk is good too. It is, but it soaks. They, those little hay bales soak up so <laughs> much damn milk. Um, my number five, the slogan is, "Be happy, be healthy." No, honey nut, honey Cheerios. nut Cheerios. Number five. That's a that's high. Didn't have them till I was an adult. Realized very quickly that they're an incredibly enjoyable cereal to eat. Gosh, they're aren't tasty, they? They're sweet. They're munchy and crunchy. Here's the thing. They're I, very. They have a They have a satisfying crunch, right? So they're crunchy, but they're not hard. Like you get a crunch, but they don't hurt your mouth. Yes. And I think that's hard. That's a hard. It's almost like a foamy crunch consistency with like a shellac on the outside of it sugar. is it is definitely shellac I mean, it's but hard to get that consistency i think um i th- think they have perfected the amount of sweetness to uh fiber i guess it would be like ratio like yeah, the dry cereal to sweetness i will and say honey when you eat a bowl of honey nut cheerios you don't feel like you're destroying your life but it's still enjoyable. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't feel like you're eating the worst thing that humans have invented for you to get diabetes with. <laughs> well, right. I don't feel like it's... You know a, what I mean? I mean, so it's it tastes good, but you don't feel bad about yourself, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I agree. I feel you really don't about feel the that bad. mini wheat, kind of. You don't feel that bad about yourself because it is something that is definitely good, but it's obviously not as good as what the commercials try to tell you it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still a sugary cereal, but so damn good to eat. Yeah. Um, so that is my number five. Your number five, Jerry. My number five, I cannot find a slogan for. I can't even really find it on the internet right now. Um because it only brings up one it only brings up one thing and that is rice crispy treats okay that's Snap, what it's bringing crackle, up pop. i know but they also came out with in the mid 90s a rice crispy treat cereal yeah i've never had it it was something i I've never would had it. Beg for, and I don't really like Rice Krispie treats that much, so I don't know if this I would like it. Is so different than a normal Rice Krispie treat. <laughs> okay, okay. It has such a different flavor. It's compl- It's not a real Rice Krispie treat. These little, they were like big hunks of Rice Krispie treat stuck together. It was like a homogenous glob of Rice Krispie <laughs> treats. I don't know how to explain it, but, but this, were they mushy or hard? no? It was hard, but oh, okay. they would get soggy. I don't know how to explain the consistency of this. It's not like a regular Rice Krispie treat, and it's also not like cereal. Okay. Uh, um, they were so good. They used to be in a blue box. Um, that Now it's purple, I guess, looking at it. Um, I haven't had it in a very long time, and now I just need to go get it. And <laughs> does it still exist? It does, apparently, because I'm looking at a box right now. Um, it, it looks like it does. Anyway... 
I don't know. It's so good. It's literally like a Rice Krispie treat, but better in a box. And I'd eat it all the time. Mm. I wanted it all the time. I would not eat anything else but this. And I would get in trouble for it because I'd eat the entire box the day we'd get in it. In one setting. And I'd hide. I'd like grab it. I'd hide. I'd eat handfuls of it. And then I'd get bowls and hide them around the house <laughs> and eat this. And no joke, eat this cereal because I was so obsessed with it for a long time. Wow. It's a problem. And then I got cavities. You know, while we're on the subject of that, which has nothing to do with it, um, were you a big cereal box? Here it is. This is what it looked like. I got to turn it around. No, 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 I'll just find it. It's it's a blue box. I need to turn it around so you can see but you're it. You're going to screw up something with our recording. Oh, probably. Um, I'm looking at it right now, so we're good. Rice Krispie Treat cereal. It's a purple box, the one I'm looking at. I, I That's why I'm telling you. This, this oh, is I the old one. I see the blue box, one. too. Frosted Krispies? No. N- no, this is the old school 90s box. Um, and Oh, I see that. Uh, the blue box, yeah. That right there, my friend, was what I lived my life for. Rice Krispie Treats. Oh, now that I see the box. Now I see the box. The Kellogg's Rice Krispie Treats yes. cereal. I remember seeing that. Never had it. Oh, my gosh. Well, you really it. missed out. You didn't even have a childhood still have in my it. life. I can still get it. I don't think it's the same. I guarantee you they changed the, the same, recipe. Though. Yeah. Um, well, anyway. Oh, were you a big, like, activity, uh, cereal box activity person? Oh, uh, absolutely. That's all I did as a kid. I would just That's sit all we there had to do. And stare at that box for an hour while I was eating in the morning. Yes. And do the mazes and read all the stuff. I loved it more that, than anything. It was like my favorite part of the day. And just staring at cereal boxes. I think cereal. that Rice Krispie Treat cereal had the best mazes on the really? back. Really? Fruity I, Pebbles also had good stuff on they it. They did. Too. Um, which brings me to my number four. The slogan is Little Pieces. Big taste. Little pieces, big taste. And I've never heard that slogan before in my life. <laughs> I haven't either. Um, but that is what the interwebs say is the slogan. Okay. Um, it is Cocoa Pebbles. Cocoa Pebbles. I think they I are I knew you'd such gonna have it on the on an the amazing list. improvement over Fruity Pebbles. You do? Oh my gosh. Yes. They just it leave it's a chocolate. I it's know. the same thing, except you're left with this amazing chocolate milk at the end. You really are. That it is very good. So good. Um, so it's basically everything we said about the fruity pebbles. It's like a slurry, but it's like a chocolate slurry. And then the milk. You're right. That milk it leaves the most perfect milk at the end of any cereal. It's the best leftover milk cereal there is. Cocoa pebbles. Mm, I have one. I think I have one that beats it. Um. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking. I'm just looking at my top three to see if I got one that beats it. Yeah, well, you Ooh, don't that have this. That one's you, good. You don't have this one. That one's good, too. Okay. Well, anyway, it. I love Cocoa Pebbles. I'm surprised you didn't have it on there. I think that's usually a favorite of people. It usually is. I have some other Cocoa things that I think are oh, better. Oh, no. They're, <laughs> not, they're not better. They are better. They're not. They are. Um, the, so that's my number four. Your number four, Jerry. My number four's slogan is... I want to eat your cereal. Count Chocula. Count Chocula, my friend. That is one of the most recent cereals I've eaten. Is it really? Yeah, because the kids last year, my my I haven't had this in such a long time. My sister for Halloween, instead of trick-or-treating, she just brought over a box of Count Chocula, a box of Booberry, and a box of the Frankenberry ones. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the only one that ate them. Okay. And the Count Chocula is it's pretty good. Oh, it's damn good. I, I. It's no, it's no cocoa pebbles, but it's pretty good. I'm telling you, I love. I, I think it is. I think it's better. I think it has a better milk at the end. It's the only monster cereal that really took off, isn't it? It is. Because Booberry, you know, it's fine. But Frank- I'm not a B- Booberry fan at all, because um, it's berry. Frank this and is Berry's chocolate. No good. This is chocolate, man. Count Chocula is where it's at. Um, I don't even know what else to say about it. It had really good commercials. I loved the count that was involved with it, the vampire guy that was involved with it. I don't know. It's a, it's a good cereal. I haven't had it in a long time. I'm going to need to go back to it. It's but the, I do remember loving the the milk afterwards. I'm going to tell you what. You're going to be disappointed. 
You think so? The milk afterwards is pretty good, but you're going to be disappointed for sure. I don't think I will. Um, you know, there was other ones. We talked about Frankenberry and Booberry, but some little known ones. Did you know about Fruit Brute? No. It's a werewolf themed one. And Fruity Yummy Mummy. That's so awful. It was all of the Universal Monsters, basically. It is, but those are bad names. Except the Booberry. I mean, there's no ghost. It's a ghost. Yeah. Um, Your number three. My Top three. Number. Oh, wait. I got to get the slogan. Um, Because you will have heard this one's slogan. Oh, maybe not. The most well known slogan for this cereal is We eat what we like. Hmm. Do, 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 do. I've never heard that slogan in my entire life. <laughs> Just so you know. But apparently that is the slogan. Eat what we like. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm lost. It is Kellogg's Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks? Yeah, I freaking <laughs> love them. Yes. They're so good. They taste nothing like apples. No, it is, it is a very like distingu- distinguishable taste, though. Yeah. Apple Jacks created a flavor. Yeah, they did. They were they basically took they Fruit say Loops it's like apples and they made them like like apple a cinnamon, cinnamon app- apple cinnamon tried to but they don't really taste cinnamon and they don't really taste appley and they're green and like salmon colored <laughs> yes it's very <laughs> odd isn't it weird but they're so freaking good oh my gosh I love me some apple jacks um they they are so good and I have had those recently and they they're still good. are still very good. You know why? Because they didn't change anything. They did not. They didn't change shit with that cereal, and it's still so good. And it was like another one that was like a kid cereal, clearly. But you kind of felt like, oh, I'm not destroying my life by eating this, even yeah. though it is terrible. Oh, it's god-awful for you. But you're like, there's an apple in the box. It's the, <laughs> this is healthy. Hey, I mean, you eat this an is... apple a day and keep the doctor away, so I can bake a box of apple juice This is fruit. Mom, I'm eating fruit. They also come, they're frequently in the little mini boxes, you know, with the, all the other stuff. That's one of the standards yep. Yep. is Apple Jacks, and I love them. And it's one I kind of constantly forget about, and that, so I feel like I'm always rediscovering it. Yes, and th- that's the best. Yeah, that's the best the part best. about it. Rediscovering something you've already discovered 437 million times, best. It's the best. Um, so that is my number three, Apple Jacks. Your number three, All right. Gerald, my, is... My number three is... F- what's the... Follow my nose. Fruit Loops? Fruit Loops, man. That high on the list. Hell yeah. I just was talking about how I was eating it at 930 at night the other night. It's us. It's always in my house. It's a solid cereal. We buy the big, big ass giant bag of them that you can get at Walmart. I don't know if you've seen them. The no. cheap bags, like... You know how you can get cheap bagged like cereal? Like generic bagged cereal? But it's not generic. It's actually oh, really? Fruit Loops. And you can get a giant like 97 liter bag of Fruit Loops. Nice. <laughs> and Don't they go stale before they get eaten? No. Your kids eat that much cereal? My kids <laughs> almost never eat cereal. No. My kids don't eat basically any cereal. I eat it. You eat all of that <laughs> oh, Fruit Loops? Oh my gosh, I love them. I do eat a lot of Fruit Loops. Holy shit. You're so like, like not overweight oh i am overweight not like massively no i mean it's not like i'm eating it for every single meal or in between every meal but i eat cereal man yeah i don't don't eat cereal i'm afraid to eat cereal i'm not kidding i'm literally afraid for my life to eat it my why because i'm afraid of getting diabetes and it's full of sugar well that could be it but uh my only kid that eats cereal is grant Okay. He eats cereal more than the rest of the two. The other two basically don't. I mean, my kids eat cereal. And if they eat cereal, they usually are going to eat fruit. That's what I was going to bring up is that don't you think that, that kids nowadays really, like all kids nowadays, just really don't eat cereal they the eat way we do? eat a lot less cereal because um, it's really bad for you and we know it. And we parents. know it, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm still eating it and bringing it in the house. Right. But they don't They don't really no. ever go for it. Um. No, they don't. But... They still still it's common for breakfast. It's like a couple times a week they'll have cereal. Sometimes I I usually try and make something healthier, but lots of times I don't get up early enough. <laughs> right. So, uh, number that was your number three. Mm-hmm. My number two you're gonna know instantly because the slogan is probably the most known slogan of any cereal. They're great. 
Really? Yeah. Frosted flakes? Oh yeah, man, they're a standard. They are. Well, I've had a lot of standards that you've they're, just. Frosted flakes are so good. I agree with you. They're frosty. They're sugary. They're <laughs> they're crispy. They are. And when they get soggy, they're good. When they're crispy, they're good. When they get soggy, they basically turn into regular cornflakes. Yeah. But the cereal is so sugary already that you're still good to go. Yeah. I, I love Frosted Flakes. And they're also a small box mainstay. Yes. I agree with you. And that's another one. You throw some banana in there. And if I had to mix a cereal with another cereal, Frosted Flakes can go with any other cereal if you were going to mix. Yeah, they really could. Because they, they provide you with a delightful amount of crisp mm-hmm. and just the right amount of sweet. Yes. Probably a little too much on the sweet. I've got I've got some comments on crisp here later. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about crispiness. Okay. So that's my number two, Frosted Flakes. I, I mean, it's not one that I go back to often, but I have fond but you're, memories of. But you're never sad when it's around. Exactly. You it's really just, aren't. It's always a, it's a good one. It is. I, I, I completely agree. If you're agree. taking your standard cereals, right? Your standards, Cheerios, Rice Krispies, Frosted Flakes... I don't like Cheerios or Rice Krispies. I agree. They suck. Frosted Flakes, a whole different category. I do like Rice Krispies, but you've got to add like three tablespoons of sugar and a banana for me. Actually, I would say Frosted Flakes is probably not in that category. Probably Corn Flakes. Corn Flakes would be in that category, yeah. (laughs) I like Corn Flakes, though. They're good with sugar, but you don't need to add sugar to Frosted Flakes. It gives you the best of Corn Flakes with no adding of sugar. Yes, because they've already added so much. Yeah. So that's, so that's my number two, Frosted Flakes. All right. My number my number two, Apple Jacks. I'm surprised by that. I'm surprised. You really? Yeah. I didn't know other people liked it as much as me. Oh, my gosh. I love Apple Jacks. They're so good. Yeah. And I, I tried to get the, the boys to eat Apple Jacks, and they looked at me like, no, that's not Fruit Loops. And we're like, it looks just like it Loops. looks like it, but it's better. But it's salmon flavored. <laughs> yes, this is salmon and algae f- boxed. All right, eat it, and it's so good. It is its own flavor. It, it, it really is. Is. It is. I don't know. I didn't even really think that it was apple cinnamon until I just looked at the picture of the box. I'm like, and they have that on the front of it. You but it's not. T- times I've stared at a box of Apple Jacks, and I've never noticed that it was apple cinnamon. Well, what do you mean? I just never noticed it. I never thought that much about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I just keep saying it's its own flavor. It's not apple or cinnamon. It's just got its own taste that is something that was designed in a laboratory somewhere, uh, and it is good. I agree. That was your number two? Yes. Um, my number one favorite cereal in the world, Jerry, and I <laughs> just interested realized, in I feel like this is very re- revealing of people. I forgot about a cereal that's like one of my favorites, but so, and this one is similar. Okay. So I can kind of group them together a little, but this is my number one. Okay. And I don't know the slogan. I'm not even going to try to find it. Yeah. <laughs> it's. Raisin Bran Crunch. Crunch. Oh, my. What? Have you had Raisin Bran Crunch, Jerry? Yes, I have had it. You know what I, the number one cereal that I've ever stayed away from in my life? What? All of Raisin Bran varieties. Oh, my God. I love Raisin Bran Crunch. I love Raisin Bran. Here's the deal. I absolutely love Raisin Bran. The problem is you got to add shit, right? Yeah. You got to add sugar. Raisin Bran Crunch the flakes are pre-sugared, yeah. and it has granola added into it. Have you not had Raisin Bran Crunch? Yeah, no, I absolutely have, but they're are you clusters. Sure? They're, they're clusters of granola, Yes, and they're frosted yes. bran flakes. I know. And raisins. Oh, it is the best. I tell you what, I could sit down and eat a box of Raisin Bran Crunch in a heartbeat without even thinking about it, and no, thank you. probably turn around and eat a second box. For real. For real, real. It's amazing. This isn't a joke. You're something not ab- joking me? No. Something about the crunch of the bran flake mixed with the crunch of the granola mixed with those soggy little raisins, mm-hmm. it just strikes the right balance, Jerry. It's got different things in it. It's got variety. It's and got Variety it, yes. is the spice of life, Gerald. <laughs> yes. Whereas a bowl of Apple Jacks, it all tastes the same. 
but a bowl of raisin bran has variety. Your mouth is like on a parade. It's like it's on a parade route. It's like here's the clowns, here's a float, here's a marching band, here's a fucking raisin. <laughs> Ugh, I hated you don't raisins. Like raisins. I I've liked them more now. In my older age, I can eat some raisins. But when I was a kid, I hated raisins. I hated everything about raisins. You would not catch me. I wouldn't even go within six feet of a box of Raisin Bran. If you had Raisin Bran in your house, I'm not your friend. It's insane that you're saying this. It is such a good cereal. I I urge you to reconsider. I will not. Buy yourself a box and try it. (laughs) I guarantee you'll like it. No. What I will try to buy is your number one. Is my number one. Hey, there's a big black cricket crawling across the floor. Kill it, because it's going to crick. It. Get it. Oh. Get it. Get that cricket. Where's it at? Oh, my God. He's on a cricket hunt, and he lost the cricket. This is a travesty. He's gone. Terrible. He's gone. I got hung up by my headset, and I lost him. Uh, Okay, so my number one is honestly... It's discontinued. Oh. It's a discontinued flavor of cereal. This is a bunch of bullshit. Why? This is going to be bullshit. It's not It's not bullshit at all. It was discontinued in 2000. It came out in 97. Three years. It couldn't be that good then. It was Cocoa Frosted Flakes. Oh, I've never even heard of it. Oh, you know what? I think I remember seeing those. So... The first time I ever had them, my brother had bought them and brought them in the house, and I fell in love instantly. I wouldn't... Oh, yeah. I remember those. Wouldn't stop eating them. They had to be around for longer than that. They're not. They changed it to chocolate frosted flakes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was it the same thing? It is not the same thing, and this is where I'm going to talk about crisp, Chris. Okay. (sighs) Here we go. All right. I'm, I'm ready. The cocoa frosted flakes had... An incredible cocoa flavor. They changed the milk to where it was a perfect, like absolutely perfect chocolate milk. And it still had the same consistency as regular Frosted Flakes. Fast forward a few years, right? When chocolate Frosted Flakes come out. And I get back into the cereal game after the army and whatnot. And I'm looking at cereals, and I remember Cocoa Frosted Flakes. But I saw the Chocolate Frosted Flakes and remembered it as Chocolate Frosted Flakes, thinking I was grabbing the same type of cereal I had as a child in the 90s, right? I pour myself a bowl. I start eating it. Immediately I knew this was not the same cereal. The flavoring is completely different. It's almost as if you're getting a bitter cacao. A dark chocolate. <laughs> oh, if that's you will. terrible. It is not the same flavor. And it's almost as if they took a they took a frosted flake and like painted it. It they look painted with chocolate. But the crispness of the cereal is almost hard. You'll get bites of chocolate frosted flakes that are like rock hard to chew through. And it was so unpleasant to eat. I've never bought a box you again. You cast it aside. And I can't, you can't find Cocoa Frosted Flakes anymore. And, you know, you've brought, up some, you've brought up some dark times in my cereal world with this top 10 cereal list. And I had to put it as my number one because it was something. My brother had found boxes of it in Louisiana when he was uh, in the Army and I was still in school. I was in eighth grade looking for Cocoa Frosted Flakes. Couldn't find them. Searching. He calls me on the phone, said, I found a bunch of them. And he sent me like 15 boxes of these cocoa frosted flakes in the mail so I could have them. And ever since that day, I've never eaten them again. Oh, my gosh. A tale of love lost. <laughs> I know. I'm going to tell you what. I just watched a commercial, a 1997 commercial for cocoa frosted flakes. And I just love our understanding of health. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. So they have... It pictured with what they're calling a complete breakfast. A complete breakfast. All right. It is a tall, it is a pint of milk. Yep. An entire pint of milk. Yes, it is. Probably whole milk. It is a bowl of cocoa frosted flakes, a banana, 
Mm-hmm. So let's go with this. Milk, fair yeah. amount of sugar. Yep. Cocoa Frosted Flakes, all sugar. They come out of a top secret room. With- um, banana, one of the, like, I mean, there's good p- potassium and stuff like that, but as far as sugar content, it's one of the highest sugar content fruits you can eat, right? Um, and then they also have a bagel. <laughs> yeah, a whole, like a whole bagel. A white bread bagel. Yep. With some kind of jam. <laughs> Like marmalade. Oh it yeah, it's like, like a mar. It's like a peach marmalade a peach on the side. Peach marmalade or something like that. I bet you it's pear. That is their breakfast. That is sugar, 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 sugar. Yeah, it's, it's full of it. I love it. I just want <laughs> that. To well, be that my, was. I want that to be my breakfast every day of my life. I know, and that was ninety seven's breakfast right there. I want there. that, except I want one one side of the bagel to have some sort of marmalade. Yeah, and the other side of the Cream bagel cheese. to have peanut butter. And I'm good. Oh, my God. You got to have cream cheese. Cream cheese. Actually, you know what my go-to is? One side peanut butter, one side cream cheese. I do that still today. Had really? It, I've never. Yesterday. I've never had that. Coast the bagel, put cream cheese on one side, peanut butter on the other side, and eat them. And you but gotta, you know what I always it's get? It's a little fun because you're like, which one do I want to finish up with? Here's kind of the funny part about my whole raisin hate. I always get cinnamon raisin bagels. Oh, I, yeah, they're fine. So good. But I like I like any kind of bagel. I, I love bagels. I love any kind of raisin toast. Oh, raisin toast is the best, isn't it? Uh, but I like everything bagels too. I like every kind of bagels. I would eat bagels yeah. for every meal of my life. If I yes, could. they're amazing. You know, you want to hear a travesty? It's the worst travesty of 2020. What is that? McDonald's got rid of a steak, egg, and cheese bagel. I absolutely know that, Jerry, because it was my mainstay order was the bacon, egg, and cheese bagel. <laughs> yeah, and they have no bagels. Because of COVID nineteen, and it's because they have a limited menu. They tell they me this. Do. I order it anyway, and they always <laughs> tell me because of COVID, we're working on a limited menu. I say, oh, what else is limited? Nothing. Nothing else is limited. They only don't have bagels. Bagels are what is limited. That's the only thing missing off McDonald's. How is menu. that possible? I don't know. Where? Why is there a bagel shortage because what? of a what virus? Does bagels being yeah. off their menu have to do with COVID? Nothing. Apparently, the bagel factories had to lay off a bunch of workers, and now we don't have bagels. Goddamn baglers. You bagelists. I wonder if bagel Baglers. makers are called bagelers. You know, I think they are. Yeah. Bagel. Baglers. Bagel tears. Bagel eye. Bagel o. Bagel e. Anyway, do you remember the commercials used to have, though? This. This commercial for cocoa frosted flakes has all that stuff but they used to always have a glass of milk a glass of orange juice yeah and then like a fruit the cereal and toast or 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 bagel bagel. that's they always had orange juice in there you know what that's when the that's when (laughs) the, the fda and the usda and the government that's when they cared about farmers they did they cared about grain farmers Yes. <laughs> they wanted us to be selling that grain. They needed to get cereal grains yes. and every other type of Soy grain. Soybean oil. They needed all of the processed food. Units. Yes. Corn syrup. Give me that corn now syrup. Now they don't want any of that. Now they just want you to eat freaking eggs alone. I remember having, it. you know what, David, if you can remember this, I think it was in fourth grade or fifth grade. We had somebody from an agricultural group come in. And oh, well, in fourth grade, it was Ag Jeopardy. They ag-, ag in the classroom. Maybe it was Ag in the yeah, classroom. It was probably like Donna Jeske or... Maybe it was. They brought in little bottles of high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, that was Ag in the classroom. Was it? Yeah. And I remember getting this little unmarked white bottle of goop that they said, it's great on your cereal. And I remember going home and, and physically pouring this syrup on my cereal and it's eating it syrup yeah yeah and it was great and it was great yeah and i loved it it's sugar it's Every, all the same everybody loved it and i remember my mom's like why are you pouring syrup like that, that white syrup on your sugar it's cereal just caro syrup basically i know that but at the time i didn't i was like yeah the, it's high fructose corn syrup mom oh <laughs> i got it in school it <laughs> sounds so industrial <laughs> yeah. but it's just sugar yep i loved it it's something 
I once got in a Twitter feud that you with will never my, with find Kevin again. Kevin Smith about high fructose corn syrup. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. He called you out. Yeah, he did. He told you to like cool your jets a yeah, little. He called me out on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, this guy's really heated about this. <laughs> and I made like a one <laughs> small comment very respectfully. Right. He kind of blew it up. But that's that's what he does. Anyway. So that's it. We kind of just like. That our, is. Our, we did our top 10. Yep. I feel like there's going to be strong opinions about it. You know, I this top 10, I don't feel like will be criticized as much because I think they are. We had similar it's but kind of different odd lists that my number one didn't even show up on your list i hated and still will never buy raisin brand cereals no. any type raisin brand crunch i don't care it still has the raisin brand title but i also love raisin brand regular raisin bread but you got to add two spoonfuls of sugar to I make just, it edible that's I, the problem i've never been a fan of raisin brand ever in my life and i will i just maybe i will i could be now Maybe I'll get a box of Raisin Bran what, Crunch because I know it won't go to waste because I can pour it down your gullet. And you're gonna... Raisin Bran is the best because it's got a great amount of crispiness, but not too crispy to hurt your mouth. But it's even better when it gets mushy. It's like... Are you sure it doesn't like, you know, like right behind your front teeth where it like will tear all the skin off of your... No, not like Frosted Flakes. Palate. Frosted Flakes will do that. Yes. But not Cocoa Frosted Flakes. They were a little softer. <laughs> The softness of cocoa. But they've been discontinued. The hardness of flakes. <laughs> These are cocoa flakes of our lives. <laughs> that's that's the that's the commercial for them. Yeah. Very good. Um, so that's our top 10. Um, make sure. Hey, we're going to do our. We got five honorable mentions each. And mine are There's dynamic. There's more cereal. They're dynamic. So Mine might be a little controversial. Yeah. So we're going to throw those out there. I know I got two that you're not going to have for sure. Three maybe. I I definitely have. Let me see. I got one. I think. Oh no! I I think I got two. Okay. So we're gonna do our on, top five uh, or our honorable mentions for cereals on our patreon.com slash snarf comics. Yep. If you subscribe at the five dollar level, you will get access to all of our bonus content. All of the content. Yeah, you'll have our bonus podcasts, which you can listen to via the Patreon app on your phone. It's very easy to stream or download from your Patreon app. And you also get stickers and access to our live activity feed where we post script pages and other things like that. Um, Jerry's got some more script pages coming out soon, hopefully. I do. Um, so, for Snarf Talk this week, I've been Chris. I am Jerry. See ya.